Hey guys, Jen from Bent Yoga here, and we are going through the eight limb path step by step. The first step is the yamas, and there's five of them. We've already in other videos covered ahimsa, we've covered truthfulness, we've covered non-stealing, we've covered right use of energy, and we're on the last yama right now. I may not be pronouncing this correctly, I don't seem to have the rolling down that a lot of people can do. Aparagraha is the last yama that we're doing. And what this one is, is non-possessiveness, non-attachment, okay? So this idea of non-attachment, at first it really turned me off because I kept thinking, but I want to be attached. I want, I want to feel happy. How can I feel happy if I'm not attached, if I'm just like sitting there, you know, with no emotion? That's not what it's about though. What this non-attachment is, is that it's you're allowing things to move through you and you're being able to choose your reactions to them rather than let them dictate how you're gonna react and what your experience is. So there's a couple kind of ways that this shows up in your life and the first one is that it's not about the goal, the finish line. It's about the journey to get there. So everything that you do, you should be doing for the sake of doing, not because what you think it's gonna bring. Think that one through for a second. It's backwards from how we usually do stuff. We want to run a marathon. So we start to run and put a running program in place every day. What this moral discipline teaches us is that's backwards. You should run for the sake of running each day, not because where it's going to get you later. Why? Because if you never made it to that marathon and you're attached to that end goal, it causes you suffering. So the way to be, to not suffer, is to be in that moment and what you're doing, you're doing for the sake of that moment, not because it's going to get you anywhere. That's a tough one to deal with. It's a tough one to think about. How often do we do things not for the sake of doing them? We're not doing that plank pose for 10 minutes because we enjoy it. We're doing it because we want a strong core to be able to do inversions or something like that. We need to change our thought. We need to do that plank for what it's providing us in that moment, in that moment only. Whatever comes from it, don't project that. Don't project that. Kind of another way to think about this um, is that a lot of us, we want to detach from the negative, right? The negative experiences, we don't want to attach ourselves to them. So we're good at letting those ones go for the most part. But the positive ones, the positive experiences, sometimes we get attached to them. Why is that bad? Because if we hold on really tight to those positive experiences, what happens when they change? Say we've got an amazing relationship. Well, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. At some point, it's gonna end. Maybe you'll break up or maybe it'll be with the death. I don't mean to depress you, but nothing is forever. And if we approach something as if, and we hold on really tight and we don't let it go when it's time to let it go, it causes us suffering. We have to learn that both negative and positive experiences are temporary. So what does that do? It, it allows us to appreciate that moment. A lot of times if we're holding on tight to something like a relationship, when it's trying to leave, when it's time is up, it's because we're regretting how we treated it in the moment, that it was solid. If you focus on just this moment in the relationship, or whatever it is, whatever experience it is, you're at Disney World or something like that, if you appreciate that moment, it's easier to let it go when it's time to let it go. It's the same with the negative. The negative teaches us a lesson. The negative experiences that come into our lives, they teach us a lesson, but we have to be able to let them go. We can't hold them in our hearts for a long time afterwards. We can't stay attached to that negative experience any more than we can stay attached to that positive and still be towards that path, geared towards that path of enlightenment. 
We have to take everything that comes into our lives and just allow it to flow through us in the time that it's meant to flow through us. We have to let it go when it's ready to let go and appreciate it for what it can offer us, negative and positive. They both teach us something, right? So this non-possessiveness, this is a huge one in non-reactivity, in learning how to be happy no matter what, is that everything that comes into your life is temporary and will change at some point. Spoiler alert, it will change at some point. The negative, that's a good thing, right? It's only temporary that this negative thing is in your life. The, the good things, we don't want to believe that. So we hold tight, we do what we can, we fight, we put our dukes up, trying to keep that positive experience in our life. It's exhausting and it causes us suffering. But if you just appreciate that moment and then you allow it to just flow through you and when it's done, you thank it and you move on. That's what this yama is all about. So that you can choose how you're reacting to things. You can choose how you're feeling about a certain experience and you don't have to let it take you down. When a relationship ends, you don't have to spend a month in bed depressed because you were holding on to that idea in your head of what it was gonna look like five years from now. That wasn't reality, that was here. You attached yourself to an outcome and then when that outcome didn't happen, it caused you suffering. The whole point of these eight stepping stones to get to enlightenment are to start to get away from the suffering. Attaching yourself to it is not a way to get away from it. So this is a tough one, but see what's out there in your life right now that you're holding a little too tight onto. See if there's anything that you're forcing that just, eh, maybe it's time to let it go. 